what a pleasure it is to be here again. Sorry to look around and see Brother Collie not here and the rest of them, but Lord, you know, wherever they are, they're with us in our hearts. And we'll just pray that he'll bring them on through those doors. Uh, we're going to read Psalms 19 this morning. Uh, it's a funny thing that happened yesterday. Brother Mark come in. A lot of times we'll be able to sneak in the back room and sit down and just have a word with him. And he uh, showed that the Lord had brought something to his heart, particularly about what Brother Dale has been preaching. And I think it's a good point for all of us to see that uh, as we open God's Word and read God's Word, we always got to be looking for what God's trying to tell us in His Word. And I've always complicated it in my little pea brain up here, but we always got to be looking in it. And I just ask this morning as we read this Psalms 19 that you be looking for justification, sanctification. Come on in. And the Holy Ghost showing up. And just be looking for it because it's always there. Before we open the word this morning, let's just uh, have a word of prayer. All of y'all, the, the ones that's not here today, just, I hope it burdens your heart for them because faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word. And we certainly have the word here. And let's just pray and ask God to strengthen the faith of the ones that couldn't come through the door this morning, all right? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this place you've given us on this earth, Father, and this time that we've come to, Lord that your word has come to full maturity, Lord, that we must take this word and all of it, not just part of it. We have to take all of it, Lord, and let us get out of the way. And Father, touch and bless these humble bodies, Father, and, and feed our hungry souls, Lord. Place your word in us that you have your way with us and that our footsteps be your footsteps, Father God, on this earth. Because we're the only thing that this world is going to see you through us, Lord. Sanctify us, Father God, that we can fulfill that. And we ask now, Lord, as we come and open your word, and you just come down and touch us, Lord, and be with each one here today that's come to hear from you, Father. Bless Brother Dale as he's preparing to bring your word, Father, and what a message he's been bringing, Father. On the simple things, as we say simple, they're not really simple, Lord because I'm glad Brother Dale is preaching over and over and over and over again, bringing this word and sweeping it through our souls, Lord, that we can see our journey, that he is speaking of our journey, and we must see it, Lord. Open our eyes and our understanding. Bless Brother Wade and all the ones in the Sunday school classes here today. As your word comes forth to us, Father, and again, bless those that couldn't be here today for whatever hindrance they had. We ask these things and bless the opening of your word. He asked in your name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> I brought help this morning. Psalms 19, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. which is as a bridegroom coming out of the chamber and rejoice as a strong man to run a race. Let the law of, the, of Lord is perfect, converting the soul and testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The 
The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Moreover, by them is the servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Keep back thy servant from presumptions of sin. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be ignorant from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. see him, don't you? Amen. Good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. If you'd like to turn in your scriptures, turn back to where we've been reading from Ephesians and Ezekiel. We'll try to continue our thought. Moving on. Uh, I pray that uh, you had a, we had a real good time last night in the Bible study. You know, we had almost as many as we have here. We had over 50 in the Bible study last night. And there's not much more here today, so that was good. I'm, I'm glad I had a good time, and we actually ran over time because we got tied up talking and things, and so, you know, it might do you good sometimes to just come and see, Amen. you know. You say, well, I don't have this little, well, just come and see, you know, might have a good time, okay? But we did. We had a real good time. Now, remember the Lord willing this coming Sunday Brother Forney will be with us and uh, to minister unto us. And then remember the next one, which is the third weekend, which would be on Saturday, will be the fellowship meeting at Brother Tom Corshane. So remember these announcements that are made. I think Wade in June is going to be gone that weekend to uh, Arizona. Arizona. So remember those and I'll just be much in prayer. Okay. Any other announcements? Let's see. Yeah, I got my own self. I write my own self a whole bunch of notes up at the front where I can read them, you know, but I uh, do it. So I'll get to those in a minute. Anybody? Anything that we miss? Okay, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this time that we have that we can sit down and just listen to you. And Lord, it's not a thing that we are forced into doing things. We do of our own accord. And if we don't do it of our own accord, then it's no good anyway. But we just pray that you'd bless each one and help us all to look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. 
We love you and we thank you. Forgive our sins. Lead us by thy grace and keep us in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians 2, <clears throat> verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith. Remember, journey. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, okay? A journey of a Christian, okay? Now let's go to Ezekiel, where we've been reading from the last couple of messages. Ezekiel 36, 24. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I give to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. You may be seated. The Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. Okay. Now, I, I wrote my own self a note because we will be continuing on in. So if you would uh, listen or read the message called The Stature of a Perfect Man. We will be eventually going into this and getting into, you know, to that place. The Lord willing, Brother Bob, I hadn't seen him, but Lord, he must be back there in the back. So, all right, but the Lord willing, Brother Bob will be ministering for us this coming Wednesday. So that'll, you know, and then wait on them will be gone the next one or so. So just remember all of these announcements. <clears throat> all right. Now, what are we talking about? What was our last thought? We've come up through justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost to be the new birth. All right. Now, the prophet said, as we were talking about last night in the Bible study, they asked him, was it required that we have justification? sanctification and baptism of the Holy Ghost to have the new birth. He said, yes, Amen. or absolutely is the correct word that he used. Well, see, then that's what we've tried to get you to see and get you to look at. I'm not trying to get you to doubt what you've got. That's between you and God. But I've asked you to consider that because if it offends you what we say about justification, sanctification, baptism with the Holy Ghost, then you're not born again. That's right. Amen. Now, if that offends you for me to say it that way, all right. It's the truth, isn't it? Because the prophet is the one that taught it, so we believe it. All right. Now, the last part we came to was the baptism of the Holy Ghost and with fire. That was our last statements of this past Wednesday talking about coming to that final, to the stage of the new birth being made manifest into our hearts and our lives. And what it was then that justification chops off your past sins. Sanctification cleanses you and sets you aside. And the baptism of the Holy Ghost comes and dwells and brings or puts within us the person of Jesus Christ in the form of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that is the new birth. All right. Now, when we studied about why did it said the baptism of the Holy Ghost and with fire. Because you see, there's a lot left in us, even though we've been, you could be justified, even though you can be sanctified, you're still a human being. You still got a, that old nature of in you. You don't have the snake. No, no, it's gone. But it's our, our natural nature of human beings and who we are. It's still there. All right. You say, well, it all went out of me when the, when the snake went out. Well, what came in? It's not as much to deal with what went out as to deal with what comes in. 
Uh -huh. Because if God don't come and live in our heart, then we're not born again. Now, remember, we've emphasized over and over why the prophet said it. When he said it like this, he said, yes, you've accepted Jesus Christ. But it says, has he accepted you? Now, Brother Branham said, if he's accepted you, he will give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If he's accepted you. But what would be the problem? What did we study through that part? Is that we, we can have all of that took out of us, yes. All of it cleaned out of us, but we're still ourselves. I'm emphasizing that over and over. Because even after you're born again, you still have to deal with your old nature. He doesn't take out everything out of us because we're sanctified. Uh -uh. It just sets, cleans it enough to where God could use it. All right. See, then you've got to come to a place to where that God could come and live in. And as he comes and lives in, see, then he burns out what's left. So that's why it said Holy Ghost and with fire. That's what your prophet said on the future home. He cleans out everything that's left and comes and lives because he's not going to come in us if there's something in there. Now, that ought to be the emphasis to understand all points about the new birth is the fact that you cannot have God and the devil in your soul at the same time because God will not dwell in an unclean vessel. All right. See, then that's got to take, be taken out of it. All right. See, then that was what we were covering, how that that Holy Ghost burns out everything that's left of us. He burns that out and comes to live in our soul and making that the new birth. All right. So there is your new birth and what we've been talking about. So we're going to stop right there to that point and jump today now because we're going over to the end of the message because I've reached a position that I want to go over kind of to the end of the message and then come back and preach on it. So I want you to think about that today, that of what I'm trying to do. I'm jumping a long ways now. So then that will, we will be covering it, you know, in, in, a, in a way to understand. All right. So then the Holy Ghost coming in burns out all that's left of you and places his own life, this is a quote from Brother Branham, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, into you as the new birth. Amen. All right. See, that's the dove that comes in. That's the dove, as we could put up the drawing and put the dove up. In the, but that's the dove that comes in, which is the Holy Spirit to come and live in us. All right. Now, in that, then, see, we can depend on him to lead us through. Because there's where Paul would say, it's not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me and said, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So we don't credit anything in our new birth to be of us. It's all God. He's come to live in us. All right. He says, now, sure, you can still be tempted but a true born again Christian cannot sin. We were talking about that last night. See, because that person that's inside of you can't do wrong. That one that's inside of you can't do wrong because it's eternal life. All right. So then we start from that point now and I want us to, to move up, but I want you to watch the point now because we're going to go through a couple of things in the message and watch it. All right, we covered that the Pentecostals, the message of their day, the message of the Pentecostals day and time was three works, three stages of grace, justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, some of them that were called Pentecostals, you know, now, some that were called Pentecostals were some that, like your, what, what did Brother Ron call them? The uh, something Methodist. There's a, 
group in there that they, they believe that sanctification is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So, but they call themselves or record themselves as being like Pentecostals. Pentecostals covers a whole large thing from the oneness to the twoness to the fourness to the Church of God to the Church of Christ. To, you know, but their message, I want you to watch that now because it's very vital to understand where they stand to know where we stand. Uh, that's the purpose of today. We're going to go over here, then we're going to drop back and pick up. So we'll pick up the stature of a perfect man. Okay. Now watch. Then the Pentecostals' message was justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the prophet said they cabbage down on that. Amen. All right. And he said they missed it. He said, because where Ezekiel says, I give you a new heart and a new spirit, he said the Pentecostal people took that new spirit as being that tongues and the shoutings and the glory, hallelujah, and believing that was the new birth. He said that wasn't it. Now, what about telling the Pentecostal people? I mean, the whole ranks of the Pentecostal movement and him telling them, that they didn't have what they thought they had. No wonder they got upset with him. No wonder they turned against him. No wonder he went from thousands in meetings to half a dozen. Why? Because the word began to open. All right, now evidently now, if he told them that, he being the prophet don't you think that that Holy Spirit within that prophet would let him know what those people were doing and how they were doing what with that new spirit? You remember how we brought it? He said in Ezekiel, I'll give you a new heart. He takes away the old stony heart and give us a heart of flesh. We taught that in the Baptist church. All right? See, because we could see a little bit, but we didn't see the the, you know, new spirit, new heart. I mean, the new spirit and then my spirit. No, we didn't see none of that. But we taught the, the fact that that unclean spirit going out and all of that things, we didn't teach it maybe that away, but we did believe in a mellow heart. See? The word that we come out with a heart of flesh, to be mellow and be, you know, sincere. All right? Now, so then being that away, now look at what I'm talking about. If they miss their message, <coughs> huh? did they miss their message or their day? I'm, I'm talking about before Brother Branham come on the scene. They had the message of justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The Pentecostals had that before the prophet came on the scene. Right. Right. But he said they cabbaged down on it and wouldn't go on with it and didn't believe it. Well, then if they done that, do you think we can't do that? We say, no, 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 we can't do that. We're, we're this, that, or the other. Well, okay. If they miss their message, and we don't get it in straight order of understanding, could it be that we miss this message? Amen. Oh, no. No. Well, what's the problem with all of this now on the internets and all of these things? We've got one message. How many different doctrines are they from one message? Right. Huh? How many different ideas or thoughts or points from one message? Okay. Now, as you see, Ezekiel, as I tried to cover, Ezekiel is a marvelous scriptures in the point that he described what would be in the Azusa Street Pentecostal movement 
that it would go from a new heart to a new spirit, and I put my spirit in you. And Ezekiel covered that, looking all the way down to the end time, because he would see, as I've covered the scripture, he'd say, now, I took you from among the people, I brought you in, I washed you clean, I done all of that, and then I made way for you to receive eternal life. Back there, right? That was Ezekiel speaking of the coming of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All right. So down through the ages, you got that baptism of the Holy Ghost. As we were trying to cover last night in a lot in the, in the Bible study that. See, each person, this is what I believe in this way. I've always talked because the prophet said it. Is it necessary that we have justification, sanctification, baptism? He said, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. He said, exactly right. All right. See, then if we argue that point, then what age are we in? Because your prophet come to tie together all of the loose ends, right? We'll get to that in a minute. What about one of those sins being the new birth? What about one of the things being the stature of a perfect man? What about those things that we claim we understand? Okay. So now let's get to the point of what we're talking about. Then the prophet brought the message to tie together as we'll cover the loose ends that was left out. He names those loose ends on a lot of it, but loose ends would be something that was not totally set down in order. So he was telling the Pentecostals, you've left loose ends. Thereby you don't know what the new birth is. Don't you think it was something for him to stand up there and talk to those people about the new birth and him be able to look right down in that person and see they wouldn't write? True. Where did they miss it at? By taking that new spirit to be the Holy Spirit instead of waiting for the Holy Ghost to come in its complete fullness. But I believe on the day of Pentecost, I mean, on the day of Azusa Street, I believe that was the new birth. That was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it came upon a people, and that's what's so amazing. I've tried to get you to look at it. See, we think, oh, it's got to be, it's got to be. You realize on the day of Azusa Street, when the Holy Ghost fell, it fell on Trinitarian people. They were not oneness until about 1912, 11 or 12, somewhere in there, for the oneness ever come into being. They were Pentecostal people, but they were Trinitarians. Mm -hmm. See, so you see why they missed their message. And we were talking about it last night, and the brother asked a question about it, where Brother Branham said, a new Trinity comes out. Well, the old Trinity was what? A Trinitarian doctrine that come out and was brought over into even from Azusa Street. They were still believing those things of a Trinitarian doctrine. All right. And he said, then a new Trinity will come out. Well, could we be in the place of that new Trinity? Could we be taking our own thoughts and ideas and it would be contrary to what the prophets said, but yet we're not, we're not going to change it. Okay. Now look. So then this last age, now here's where we want to start from. Because I believe, and I've taught it from the day, day one when I've seen what the prophets said, I believe Azusa Street was the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Amen. the new birth. Amen. I believe that's what they had. All right. And see, having the baptism of the Holy Ghost, see, then that was the pouring out of the promise that I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
literally it was more of a promise than back yonder. Because back there, when he poured out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, you didn't have the false vine involved. He said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and daughters, my handmaids. See, on the Zeus Street, it was poured out upon everything. Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecost, or really they wouldn't call Pentecostals until that time. All right? And as that was poured out upon them, they accepted it and took it and put it down as being tongues as evidence or signs and wonders. Okay? Now, and I'm from a firm believer in that. And here comes Brother Branham along, and what does he say? See, there's a lot of people in this message don't believe that the Zeus Street had anything. Well, if they didn't, you don't have anything to stand on. What are you standing on? Really, I'm standing here today. That's why I've done it and have defended it so hard. I stand here today on justification that Martin Luther taught. I stand on sanctification that John Wesley taught. I don't deny any of that. That was God for the age. That was the new birth for the age. That was part of the kingdom of God for the age. And if you don't believe they had the new birth, then where do you get your idea from? Hmm. See, they had a new birth of the time, the age and the points. We were talking about last night, discussing it quite lengthy. All right. Now, get to point, then we're t going into the message. This last age, Azusa Street, completed the birth. Uh, that's where we're going to start from now. So you're going to have to hold on. It completed the birth. Okay. There's where your prophets told, and that's how much he may, I mean, pointed to what they had. They had the new birth. He said, I met people that had the baptism of the Holy Ghost 50 years, he said, before I. Come along. Sure. The genuine, now listen, he said exactly like on the day of Pentecost. Did you think people accept that? I told you about it. We were sitting in a, I mean, I was two brothers. We, we were at a place and we were sitting there discussing it and that topic came up and they both said they couldn't understand. I said, why, why can't you understand? I said, on the day of Pentecost, there was two things took place. The upper room experience was 120. They had been tutored by the Lord Jesus. And when the Holy Ghost fell, it gave them what we would talk about, the stature of a perfect man in the thing. Not the headstone because it hadn't come yet. All right. But 3,000 outside only heard one message. So there's a simple answer to the prophet saying it. He wasn't saying that the 120 in the upper room just had a small amount. No, he was saying they were genuinely born again. But the ones outside, see, had the new birth, yes. But that new birth, there was not a one of them out of that 3,000 that was used to write the word. All that was used to write the word come from the 120 in the upper room. That's right. Well, because they didn't have it. They were having to depend upon that. That's why Peter was teaching the stature of a perfect man. Who to? Right. Yep. Right. Who to? Right. To the 3,000 that received the Holy Ghost. Right. Right. But that was only the new birth for their age and time. We'll get to that in the stature of perfect man as we go along. All right. But watch now. Go ahead with number one. And let's read a few of them. But then if the Pentecostal message was the last message, 
with justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Ghost, the last three messages, the last three church ages forms the complete birth. Okay? Now, is he right? He's talking about the Pentecostal people that they've, that completes the birth. Amen. All right. Now then in a minute, we'll get to it where he said, but there was a lot of loose ends left, but it completed the birth. Yep. Well, as people say, well, I don't believe them, Pente them uh, Zeus streets had the new birth. Well, I don't believe you got it if that's what you believe. So we got each other fighting with each other about it, right? Because why can't you believe they have the new birth? Well, they had all these problems and this, that, and the other. What's your problem? If we're going to put it on problems, what's your problem? Hmm? So I'm going to try my best to believe what that prophet said, that he met people with the baptism of the Holy Ghost exactly like the day of Pentecost. All right. Now, are you going to accept that point as to be what he said? Do you need that one? We, we can bring all of these up. All right. But look what he says. The last three ages completed the birth. Justification under Luther, sanctification under Wesley, the baptism of the Holy Ghost under Azusa Street, or we would call it the Pentecostals. Completed the birth, or in other words, brought the birth back to where that it would be like the book of Acts. See, there's where you'll go with it and, and do, but won't listen to what somebody that's trying to explain it is saying about it. You'll go, I, I don't see how them Pentecostals could have had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why, well, look what they've done. They had this problem. They had a, well, what's your problem? See, I just put it plain. You say, well, I just don't see how they could have had the new birth. Well, you're saying the prophet was wrong? That's your choice. He said they had the new birth. He said they had and that it was completed in that of that new birth. Well, I never thought about it like that. Because I heard Brother So-and-So saying all they had was just gifts and signs and wonders. What do you think they had in that day? If they had gifts, they had the Holy Ghost. Well, I just don't, well, okay, that's, you don't believe it. But now go tell everybody else you don't believe it. I've tried my best to be honest with you. I say what I say from the pulpit. But you go yakety yak to each other about what you believe, they where I'm wrong. Why don't you come tell me? At least we can sit down and talk it out. But I'm talking it out here. I'm putting it plain as I can be. Your prophet is the one that said it, not me, that the last three ages completed the birth. All right. See, then they must have had the new birth. And he said it completed the birth. Brother Brandon said one day like this, he said there was, uh, in other words, he said the early Azusa Street is basically what he's saying. But he said they were closer to the coming of the Lord than we are. You need that quote? Well, I don't see how that could be close. What's he talking about? They were living a Christian life under the word of their age and really crying out to God. They were being good Christians. Right? All right. 
And now watch. And then you say, well, what are we, what are we here and what are we doing? All right? We're here to understand the word of God and to walk therein. All right? Now, so are you, you satisfied with that? He said it completes the birth. Okay. Well, then that was back there. Well, I just don't believe it. Well, he said it, so you're arguing with him. Now, that's, that's nothing to me and you. And you sit in my office and say, Brother Dale, I don't believe it. I'm going to say he said it. And you saying you don't believe him. Because he's the one that said it. Well, I think he meant. Well, now, I don't care about your mints or me either one. What did he say? That's what he meant. Right? Okay. Now let's go to number two and pick up a thought and get into this for the rest of the message. Now he's talking about in this last age and how that it's going to come to where we're at. All right? So listen. Takes the book seals and breaks them and shows the seventh angel or this alone, the mystery of God is the ministry of the seventh angel. Okay. That's the ministry of the seventh angel is to what? To tell us about these things. What did Brother Random come for? Well, right. We just come through the ages and the history to prove it. And it's the angel's message of the seventh church. All right. Revealed all the mysteries that's been in the past, all the things in the past, Revelations 10, 1 through 7, that's to be. And remember in the days of the seventh angel, he is sounding forth, blasting forth the gospel trumpet. He used to finish all the mysteries of God. Okay. What is the message for this age? What was the prophet to do? The Zeus Street completed the birth. He didn't come to bring a new birth to a Zeus Street. They completed it. That's what he said. Now, it's like here, come forth in the early church age. We'll get to it after a while. First, it was a doctor named it in. Then it become a saying first, then a doctrine. And then there, then become a statute, then become a church. And through the dark ages and out of the dark ages come the first reformation, Luther, and he brought with him all kind of mysterious things that happened during that church age, all back in Darcy, but he never finished it up. Luther didn't finish it up. Wesley didn't finish it. Zeus Street didn't finish it. It's this message that's the one for the finish. Amen. Not Luther and Wesley. Done the, they done the best they could do. They had God for their time, and they, they come forth with the message. All right? Listen. Then along come Wesley with sanctification, some more of it, but still never finished it. Left loose ends everywhere, such as sprinkling instead of the baptism. And Luther took Father, Son, and Holy Ghost instead of the Lord Jesus Christ. All these different things. But there's where we take that and say, well, Luther and Wesley and them didn't have nothing. Now, Brother Brandon said the, com the birth was completed on the Zeus Street, the message. Right? Well, then West, Luther and Wesley and them, you say, well, Luther and Wesley and them didn't have nothing. I'd like for you to show me that. Because they had the new birth for their time. All right. And if they didn't have the new birth, they're not in the body of Christ. Because it requires the new birth to be in the body of Christ. All right. So then let's let them be what they are. They had loose ends. Why? Because they were not prophets. They were reformers. Right? 
Then along come the Pentecostal age with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Cabbage down on that. There cannot be no more ages. That ended that now. That's all of it. That's the fill or the uh, the lady of sin. But then we found in the studying of the scripture that the messenger to the age come right at the end of the age every time. Paul come at the end of the age. We find out Irenaeus come at the end of the age. Martin, end of the age. Luther, end of the Catholic age. And what Wesley at the end of the Lutheran age. And the Pentecost at the end of the age of sanctification through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So what come forth? The Pentecostals. All right. And at the end of the Pentecostal age, we are supposed to receive, according to the word, as God helped me tonight to show you through here, that we are to see, receive a messenger that will take all those loose ends out there and reveal the whole secret of God for the rapturing of the church. Now that's Brother Branham's message, right? That's Brother Branham, right? Okay. That's the one we're talking about that we claim to believe. That's the one that said that the Pentecostals had completed the birth. Right? Then there's coming forth seven mysterious thunders. See, that's where we get all that tied up. I believe through those seven thunders be revealed in the last days in order to get the bride together. Okay. Now, we ain't going to deal with that part. We're just going on with what we're talking about. Because I'm trying to get you to see one thing. When the prophet come to bring this message, there was a lot of loose ends. Right. That's right. That's right. And he had to pick it up and bring it forth. Okay, let's go. Go to number three. And her messenger is promised in Malachi 4, the fourth chapter, he's promised to do it. And the message is to bring forth the word, bring the people back to the word. Birth is to be, she's to be delivered of a new birth from according to Malachi 4. The bride is to be delivered of a new birth. From according to Malachi 4. In other words, the prophet's message is to birth you and me. Azusa Street finished, uh, completed the birth of the ages. But this word has got to be birthed by somebody to prove that it's correct. Well, it don't have to be correct. Come on, get off. I ain't going to argue with you. But look, the message is to bring back the word. This prophet was to bring back the word to what? To word that the bride could be delivered from a new birth or by a new birth. Now, do you understand what I've tried to explain? In the days of Martin Luther, Martin Luther was a, was a, oh, uh, you call it a monk in a monastery and studying and doing those things. And God appeared to him and brought him the message of the just shall live by faith. And that was the word for the age. That was the new birth for that age. The just shall live by faith. John Wesley come forth with sanctification. That was the word for that age. That was the new birth for that age. Mm -hmm. Zeus Street came forth with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The restoration of the gifts, signs and wonders, yes. But that was the birth of the age. See, then here we come and what do we get? We are to be delivered. That's what he said. She's to be delivered of a new birth. From according to Malachi 4. Who is to be delivered? Amen. The bride of Christ. Amen. This message has got to be birthed by somebody. Right. A birth means a coming forth into. Right. Somebody's got, got to come forth into this message and be the very message. Amen. Amen. Right? Because if they're not, you realize all the rest is waiting on you and I? 
Everything's waiting on you and I. For us to give birth to the message that has been brought. Well, I just don't see nothing like the. Well, that's, that's all right. You can take what you want to, do what you like. But you see, when then Brother Branham would make statements, people just go, Hey, you are. Look at the next one. What does he say? Number four, look what he says. And then we find out then these mysteries are supposed to be revealed. And why didn't these other men, Wesley, Luther, and these great reformers who brought out justification, sanctification, Pentecostal age with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, still why didn't he catch these, these messages? Why didn't they get them? Because they were reformers. That's the reason Luther and them could not go any further than they went. They were reformers. All right? Well, look. And take on the other side, there was people come in who was Paris Kings, as he explained. But these, the reason that all of the stray ends of the mysterious part about justification, the mysterious part of sanctification, the mysterious part of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, he said they went through their time and their ages and done what they're supposed to do, but there was a mysterious part left, a mysterious part of justification, a mysterious part of sanctification, a mysterious part of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now remember, that's in the seals where he's explaining it. What is the mysterious part of justification? What is the mysterious part of sanctification? What's the mysterious part of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? That the seals is to bring it out. That the prophet was to bring it. Not me and you. Not Brother Dale or anybody else. It was the prophet to bring the ones, that's the reason I read that, where he was to come for and bring together all the loose ends. And he did. Huh? He brought forth the mysterious part of these. All right. But what did he bring, Brother Dale? Well, He brought the mysterious part. In other words, he brought justification from what man thought it was saying to a correct understanding of what really justification is. He brought sanctification from a place of what man thought it was. See, most people think sanctification means you don't cut your hair, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't chew. Right? Most everybody thinks that's what sanctification is. Well, I quit this and I quit that. Thinking that's what sanctification is. You know that Brother Branham says, your name goes on the book as a believer. That's sanctification. No, my name went on the book before the world. The prophet said it. Sanctification means a whole lot more than what we think. Justification means a whole lot more than just chopping off your past sin. That's what I've tried to get you to see. That's what Wade has tried to get you to see. Remember, he preached on this not too long ago. The mysterious part of justification. Well, what do you mean, mysterious part? It's just going to just chop off the past sins. There's a mysterious part. Because the bride is to be delivered from a new birth, according to Malachi 4. So, this message is to bring you and me to an understanding of the new birth 
that has never been understood by mankind. Right? This message is to bring us to a new birth that mankind never understood. So what is it? Huh? What is this mysterious part? It was something that was not revealed, but yet it was spoke of all the way back through. Ezekiel in his saying, a new heart and a new spirit, and I put my spirit, he was explaining this mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? But do we understand it? I'm talking about a mystery. I'm talking about something that nobody before this prophet came had it in its total clarity because in the Old Testament, they could not bring those things to the right order because they were not born again. Right? See, but when the prophet came on the scene, now watch where he lays these things out. What is the mysterious part of justification? What is the mysterious part of sanctification? What is the mysterious part of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? All right. What do we find justification to be? We found it to be the chopping off of your past sins. All right. Now, that's been understood by everybody. We taught in the Baptists that your sins were away. We might not have taught it as, as justification, but we taught it as you come into the altar repenting of your sins and God takes away those sins from what? That he puts it so far. I can remember that until now even thinking about it. when the man come, he said, and he took it so far, he said, not from the north to the south. He said, because that won't work. He said, but from the east to the west, because there's no stopping and starting point from east to the west. North to the south's got a stopping point. But east to the west ain't got no stopping point because you just go right back around. Right? There's no stopping and starting from east to west. So that's why the scripture says that our sins are put in the sea of forgetfulness never to be remembered no more as far as the east is to the west. Which is no stopping and starting. So whatever he done with my sins, they still cannot be brought against me because they're in his sea of forgetfulness. The justification is a great thing. But what about when your prophet come into it? Let's run through this in a hurry where you can get it. Because see, I'm trying to put this here and then we'll drop back. You go to a little message where Brother Branham was talking about called the invisible union of the bride of Christ. I'd ask you to do that. Go to that message and listen to it. I ain't got time to listen to no message at all. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Okay. You flunked algebra. Yeah. They, they had a teacher over at Banks County that she was real good at algebra. And anybody that studied under her were top knots in algebra. But bud, she would flunk you in a hurry. They called her flunking Duncan because that was her life's name was Duncan. And bud, she would flunk you on that if you didn't do what was right. She didn't have no halfway between. Didn't do no good to take an apple to try to get her on your side. She was straight. But those who believed and stayed with her come forth as to being great algebra masters. Right? Because of the way she was doing. All right. But see, justification, what does it do? It chops off our past sins. Go to the invisible union and listen to it. See, it would take the whole book for me to express. That's why I'm asking you to. 
And if you ain't got enough in you to go study that message, then you don't care what's being said. Then you don't know what Brother Branham said. See, in that message, he covers justification as chopping off your pious sins. In that message, he goes on to cover justification was the fact of what? You were guilty of doing it. You done it. But it was as though you never done it because God took it away. Study that from that message of invisible union. It was though you never done it. Stage two. Stage three of justification is that you are so pure and clean that the real you never done it. Go to Invisible Union and study the message. You claim to believe the prophet? Go study the message. Where do you think I got it out to teach this from? From the Invisible Union. Because in the Invisible Union, he covers that your sins are chopped off. Then he covers that it's as though you never done it. Because he took your place and put your sins in the sea of forgetfulness. But see, the real you, which is not you as a human being, the real you is the person of the baptism of the Holy Ghost living in your soul. Right? The real you is the new birth. That new birth never did sin. But we've done all of them things. But you can't make him a sinner. So a mysterious part of justification. Where did we taught of sure chopping off your pious sins? Sure, we tried to bring it up a little further and talk about the sea of his forgetfulness. Never to be remembered no more. But you see, your prophet started right there and took it on to showing that the real you, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, never did sin. That's why the Bible says that his seed remaineth in you and you cannot sin. But, 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 but Brother Dale, Brother Brown said Christian sin. Where do you sin as a Christian? You better not be sinning from the soul because if you're sinning from the soul, you ain't a Christian. You better get out there in that spirit realm in your memory and start to sin from that point. So then the Bible's right, the prophet's right. What? It's impossible, he said, for a Christian to sin. Then he turns around and says a Christian is the only one that can sin. Is he wrong? No, he was teaching it correctly. Repentance chops off that pious sin. Does nothing to your nature or anything. All right. So you see it? A mysterious part. Now, if an old drawhide as I am could come up years ago and bring those things 40 years ago, how much more did your prophet understand about the real meaning of justification? What do you mean? I mean... If he's put our sins in the sea of forgetfulness, they can't be remembered no more. That's a pretty good state of saint of justification, don't you think so? And the Bible says, those who he's justified, what? He hath already glorified. If you were genuine and repented of your sins, they were chopped off. If you're genuine, you want to go on. You'll go on and prove that you'll be glorified one day. you got a journey to travel to, but you prove you're right if you're a genuine Christian. All right? Sanctification. See, sanctification, like justification, is taught in three stages. Sanctification is a cleansing and setting aside, right? You were cleansed and set aside. Because that's what sanctification does. 
But you see, the apostle Paul then, after getting the new birth, he taught a sanctification more than just a cleansing. He taught a daily sanctification. Right? Right? Paul taught after you're born again. Well, after I'm born again, I don't need to be sanctified no more. See, that's where we put our big mouth up and we run it instead of listening to what he said. Let's listen to what he said. Look at uh, number seven. Let's see what this apostle Paul understood about sanctification. First Corinthians fifteen thirty one. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. When he's already born again, what do he need to die for? Because of what we do every day. What do we need to repent for? For what we do every day. Okay, let's see what the prophets say. Go ahead to number eight. All the days of our life. But we are who are bond slaves to Jesus Christ. We are slaves of joy. I'm so glad that I got shackles on me. That shackles me away from the things of the world. That I could become a slave to Jesus Christ. To serve him in love and you and my brethren and sisters who are like precious faith, who's been born of the Holy Ghost. Well, that's, 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 oh, no, come on, read what he says. That's had the blood of Jesus Christ to sanctify and cleanse you from all the filth of the world that died daily to your flesh. crucified, putting it away and becoming a slave to your own body to serve God. We look for a city to come. See? Sanctification is a cleansing and setting aside. But then after you're born again, Paul taught a daily sanctification. Stage one is chopping off you, is a cleansing and setting aside. Stage two comes up to a daily sanctification. Now you need these. Where Brother Brown says, I die daily. And if Paul had to die daily, how much more am I I'm going to have to stay there dead all the time? If Paul had to die daily to stay with God, so we'll all have to do that. Just die out to ourselves. And that's getting God's way. How many of you want? How many of these you want me to read? Die daily, where we got to keep in revival, constantly revived every day. Paul said he had to die daily for Christ, that Christ could live. And we must never let that revival die. Because we do, that's your revival. That's what I've tried to explain to you. I have a revival every day. But it's through the washing of the water of the word. The studying of God's word should bring us a revival every day in our hearts and lives to realize what he does to love us. You got to repent and die daily to live in Jesus Christ. So every day, every day, you got to die every day to live in Jesus Christ. See? Brother Branham, we have problems. Number 13, contending for the faith. We're tempted. All of us are tempted. All of us sin. There's none without sin. Every day you sin. And Paul said he had to die daily. And if we say that we sin, 
and have no sin, then the Bible says we make God to lie. Okay. We didn't teach too much of that in the Baptist. I don't know about y'all where you come from. And how much in the Pentecostals they taught that, a dying daily, but Paul taught it. So the first stage of, of sanctification is what? Cleanse and set aside for service. Second stage is to keep us clean. What's the third stage of sanctification? The run said it's in the seals. So Wade covered it. What is sanctification under the seals? There's going to be a cleansing of this whole world under the sixth seal. So there's a sanctification under the sixth seal that the Bible covers that we didn't know anything about because we didn't know anything about the seals. But the prophet knew about it and covered it for us and we can die daily. Right? A mysterious part. A mysterious part is that God can cleanse this world until it can be lived on. A mysterious part that he can so cleanse you and I until he can come and live in us and take us in a rapture. Okay? Got to get in a hurry. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. Three stages of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. According to Romans 8. You can go ahead and pull up Romans 8 if you want to. Because that's, that would be 14. Romans 8. Because Romans 8, Romans 8 covers three things. The new birth to make us children of God. That we're so much until we've become his offspring. From Romans 8. But then there is a point of adoption in Romans 8. That brings us to a place that was never taught by mankind to understand, but a part of adoption to where we see who we are and what's taking place. We'll get into that in the statue of perfect man. But you see, one day this world even will get such a fiery baptism until it will burn off all sin and burn all demons, all things that goes, would be done by a baptism of fire. But that was what I was talking about the other day. See, that baptism of fire that comes into you cleanses out all the devils that's in there. There ain't no devils left in your soul if you have the new birth. Uh -huh. And it'll so cleanse us until we're going to be delivered of a new birth from according to Malachi 4. Paul goes on to 23rd, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's adoption, right? Amen. What are these that children are supposed to understand? Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious <laughs> liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together until now. Because right. something's got to happen. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit. To understand or to set into motion, to get it into what? What? The redemption of the body. You see, justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Ghost, then it is a mystery under the seals. Your prophet took in that mystery us all the way to the change of the body. Right? The prophet took the message in the seals all the way to the change of the body. Because that's the last thing that we're to have is a body change. Because then we'll go into glory you see what I'm talking about? The prophet said a mysterious part 
For there was things that was not understood about the justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the prophet brought it and showed it to us. Because by that can we be delivered of a new birth. Well, Brother Dale, I, I didn't know we had to have a new birth. We've got to have a birth of the message of the age. Amen. Not another birth to go back and be born again. But a point of being truly, completely born again. I've always taught you one thing. Let's see how many of you can remember it. When our body... Soul and spirit is totally redeemed. Surely you can say, I have the new birth. You remember that? That's 40, 50 years I've been preaching that because that's what I believe. That if we come to the place that we're so cleansed and set aside, so filled with that baptism of the Holy Ghost, Hang on just a second. Come on, musician. Let me read this last two. Because you see, I love these. I didn't give them this back there. From the message oneness, 1962. But God wants to feel every fiber of his church. He wants to feel your thinking. He wants to fill your mind. He wants to fill every bit of you. Just make you completely, totally dead to yourself or to your thinking. Just surrender in God till his word just living right through you. You don't have nothing else but God. You stay with the word. Fill every fiber of your being, every fiber of the church. Okay. Once more, preached in 1963. Once more, Lord, move over the Holy Ghost. Well, excuse me. Once more, let the Holy Ghost take this audience, break down the powers of the enemy, and fill every fiber with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've always quoted that to you because I believe it. So you say, well, Brother Dale, what are you looking for? I'm looking for such a baptism of the Holy Ghost to come that it'll fill every fiber of our being and take us in the rapture. But what is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? The revealed word. Come on, what is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? The word made alive. So that's what I've always taught. The alive word will change these beings that we are. The prophets brought the message. We don't have to look for anything in that. We have the message. We are to be delivered of a new birth from the message that we are in this age of Malachi 4. Amen. To fill every fiber of our being and take us into rapture. See, I look for something to take place. Yes. California had an earthquake the other day, 6.4 something. They had another one, what was it, yesterday? 7.1. Now, your prophet said it like this. He said, after a series of earthquakes, California will go under. A series means one after the other. So they've been, they have probably a thousand earthquakes a day in California. but not the big ones. Seven is a big. And see, if you go from a six, now I know that's six or four, you have to calculate it, but say one of them is a six and the other one is a seven. Do you know what that means? In earthquake terminology, every time you go up one number, you go 10 times. A number seven is 10 times more powerful than a number six. 
Come on, study your science a little. Ten times. And a six will flatten a city or a seven. Ten times. Shake it apart, right? Come on, for folks, where are we at? Let's stand. Study the statue of a perfect man because we took it today right up to the change of the body. This message has a change of the body in it. We're not looking for another message or a messenger to come. This message... the message of eternal life. This prophet come to try to get all the loose ends and bring the message to the change of the body. We don't need to look for more help for something. Look at what we got. Services last night, ask Brother Joe and them about it. They'll make you a copy of last night's Bible study. And just listen to what we were all talking about. Get into a very interesting point sometimes. sister has a great desire in her heart. She has a, a big desire for her family. Lord, you just reach down and touch them. We send each prayer clause and we believe it that whatever she is asking for, they'll be done because you promised it in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody else?
Father, we thank you for today, and I would just ask you, Lord, to open our understanding of what we're trying to say. Because we believe the prophet brought everything right down to where we're at. And we stand here looking and desiring to see a finish of all of these things. And to know that when it's finished, that Father, we give all the honor and glory to the one that brought the word unto us. We just ask you to help us. Help us to see, like the things the prophet would say, a mysterious part. He knew there was great mysteries left there that would have to come forth. One of those would be a new birth from according to Malachi 4. How much more do we need it then? We need to seek after you for understanding of what we do have need of, but to glory in what we've seen. Let your love and your grace be with us all. Guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.